Okay, last night we learned, or last night, uh, last time I saw you guys, we learned about interest groups. And it's basically when people come together and they want the same thing and they try to manipulate the government to achieve those goals whichever way they can. Today, let's learn about the uh, different tactics they use to achieve those goals. So we begin the next assignment in our notebook, 3.3 Tactics of Interest Groups. So basically, uh, what are the different ways that interest groups try to achieve their goals? Number one, they use mass media. Uh, they'll buy commercials, they'll do interviews with news organizations, whatever it takes uh, to get their goals accomplished. Number two, they will advocate for boycotting. For example, uh, the women's rights group now, it, they told businesses to boycott states that would not pass that Equal Rights Amendment in the 1970s. Um, this is the Equal Rights Amendment. Ooh, and this is now a woman's rights organization. You like my writing? Okay. Um, or South Carolina was flying the Confederate flag, really, up until just a little while ago, I think. And um, civil rights organizations said to boycott South Carolina. You might wonder, how do you boycott a state? Basically, what that means is they would tell businesses in that state, you should leave that state uh, or we're not going to support you. Okay, what's another way that interest groups accomplish their goals? This is a big one right here. Litigation. Litigation. Look at that. I'm using the laser. Litigation. Litigation is lawsuits, okay, through lawsuits. Um, there's, I mean, there's so many examples of this, but how about Brown versus Board of Education? So Brown, the board. This was black students that wanted to be able to attend a white school and in segregation. Uh, these things don't happen on accident. This lawsuit happened because a family chose to be represented by the NAACP which is an interest group, okay? So litigation, filing lawsuits to accomplish a goal by an interest group happens all the time, all the time. Another group that uses litigation a lot is the NRA. The NRA uses litigation a ton, okay? Uh, let me... Clear. Okay, another... This is also related to litigation a little bit, is interest groups use amicus curie briefs. So let's say there is a lawsuit involving uh, a gun store that sold a gun to a guy, and then later that guy went out and shot and killed somebody, and somebody's suing the gun store, saying you should have done a better job making sure that you didn't give a gun to a dangerous person. An amicus curie brief is like, it, it's actually Latin for a friend of the court. I would write that down. A friend of the court. And what that means is, like, in that lawsuit with the gun store, the NRA really wants the gun store owner to win that case. So the NRA is going to submit amicus curie briefs. So in court, these documents can be submitted to help the gun store owner, even if his lawyers are not from the NRA. The NRA can submit papers to assist the gun store in winning the case. And uh, interest groups do this all the time. They file these on behalf of cases that they're very interested in. and that Because if you lose a case, it could set a bad precedent. So you want to make sure that the, the ideology you agree with, that the case wins, and so you're going to try to assist those cases in winning in court. What's another way that uh, interest groups get things done? Campaign contributions is a big one. Um, we can look at, um, we'll look at groups like, um, that are pro women's right to choose a group that is pro women's right to choose. Maybe they support Hillary Clinton. Okay. So they're going to send money to Hillary, uh, because they want her to get elected because she agrees with their point of view or the NRA is going to send money to a more conservative candidate because philosophically they agree with each other. What that also means is that once that person is elected, there seems to be this implicit agreement. Uh, you scratch my back, 
I scratch yours. So you give me money and I, you know, it's not promised, but probably I'm going to support your cause when I get in office. Another way that interest groups, another tactic they use is endorsement of candidates. And we heard this last night in the Democratic debate, if you were watching, they were talking about the NRA and they were talking about like uh, report cards that the candidates were given. So like, well, I have, I have a D minus from the NRA. They were saying that as if they were proud. And then another, another guy had an A from the NRA. And uh, so to be endorsed would mean that a group gives their approval for you. They usually don't endorse like a whole bunch of people. They, they pick one from the Democrats or one from the Republicans. Um, so for instance, I read today that Hillary Clinton... She got some momentum from the debate, and some unions came out, unions came out, and endorsed her. So uh, basically, they're telling all their union members, "You should vote for Hillary. That's who we support." Um, they can also target candidates that they just that that they feel like would hurt their cause. So. Uh, I mean, this happens all the time when you see those advertisements, you know, don't vote for Bush because of this or that. Don't vote for Obama because of this or that. Um, so they can target candidates. We're going to watch an ad from moveon.org in class. All right. There's also ways that um, they can actually literally get laws done. Uh, this is on a state level. This is not a federal thing. So all this stuff is state level stuff. Let's talk about each one of these things because it's important to know what they are. An initiative. An initiative is uh, sometimes when I go to Walmart, there are people sitting outside of Walmart and they're, they're sitting at a little table and they are saying, you know, sign this law to get rid of... Um, so California, I know, had this law passed about a year ago where, like, um, if you were transgender, you could use whatever bathroom you were comfortable with or whatever locker room you were comfortable with. This is still a law right now. And there are some people that this made really angry. And so they went outside of Walmart and Target and Stater Brothers and they set up a booth and they were probably supported with money from an interest group who wanted to overturn this law. California has a process called the initiative process where you can, if you get enough signatures, I think it's like, uh, I don't know, it's several hundred thousand signatures We'll say it's like 500,000. You get 500,000 signatures. It's going to be different based on your state and the population and the rules. But get those signatures, and then if you get enough, it will go on the ballot in November. So it will go on the ballot in November, and then everyone can vote on it. So it doesn't mean 500,000 signatures changes the law, but it, it allows it to go to an election. Uh, and then the same time you're going to vote for president or something, there will be a question on there. How do you feel about the... The bathrooms, do you want to overturn that? A referendum uh, is whenever registered voters get to accept or reject a proposal. So maybe there's something controversial like California wants to deal with gay marriage and they allow the people to vote on it instead of passing a law. So that's a referendum. Uh, and then recall is the idea that you could remove a candidate from office if Basically, if you want to. So they put it up to a vote. We did this in California, and uh, we took out Gray Davis. Davis got removed, and he got replaced with Arnold Schwarzenegger. So Davis got recalled, and Arnold replaced him, and the voters did this. Now, I just explained these vocab words, but what I'm saying is these are all tactics that interest groups use. They spend money to accomplish their goals. They are paying those guys to sit outside of Walmart to, for every signature they get. I've actually done that before. I was a guy that sat outside of one of the stores and was getting signatures on something, not because I cared about it, but because every signature I got, I got $2. Uh, lobbying is whenever you have people in Washington, D.C. that wine and dine Congress members uh, in order to get access and get them to follow what they want. We're going to have a whole day of lecture on this. How about mass mailings, uh, where um, interest groups send out mail to specific parts of the population? Um, you know, maybe they want to send mail to just people over 65 years old that are Democrats uh, in order to, like, spread the word of their interest group. All right, the next section is uh, reasons for joining an interest group. 
joining an interest group is kind of uh, silly in a way because, well, you don't have to join, and a lot of times you can get the benefits from it. Um, but there is the knowledge that a single person is probably not going to make much of a difference. So joining a group will expand your voice. Um, but if you don't join, you're probably going to receive the benefits from that group anyway. For instance, an old person joining AARP will benefit from the group's lobbying efforts whether or not they join AARP. So they do have this little bit of a free rider problem um, that people that join, people that don't join the interest group still get the benefits of the group. So I might ask you, what is a free rider problem? It's the idea that people that don't have to join the group and can still get the benefits. So they need to have other incentives in order to get people to join. Uh, there are different types of incentives. There are material benefits like newsletters, t-shirts, mugs, magazine subscriptions, cardigans. <laughs> Uh, there are purpose of benefits, like the satisfaction that someone has doing a good thing and joining a group that they agree with. And there are solidarity benefits or the social benefits of joining. And then lastly, factors that, like, what is it that makes an interest group really strong? And, uh, well, the size. The size of an interest group will have to do with how strong it is. The more members... That means probably the more donations they get and the more votes that they control. Okay, money equals votes, sadly. So AARP is a huge interest group because a whole bunch of old people belong to it. And the more members that they have, that means uh, the greater cross pressure among members and possibly less focus. So the, the, what this is saying is the bigger the group, the more likely that that group is a little less focused, okay? So a smaller group is, can actually be more focused. Uh, what else influences the uh, nature of membership is how spread out the members are. Are they concentrated together or are they dispersed? The cohesiveness of the members, the degree to which the members are committed to the cause, uh, people who are really passionate about it versus people who are solely there in order to get a good deal on life insurance, like AARP. Um, they're maybe less committed because they just joined in order to get the benefits. Uh, the leadership of the interest group plays a role in the power of it, and the resources of the interest group, the money, the expertise, the reputation, the connections. Okay, that's it uh, for the lecture today. Peace.